it's been fun in recording and sharing devotionals because we've been talking about how you wake up and whether you wake up like this guy, kind of joy joy, or whether you wake up like a character, like my wife, and just kind of don't do mornings. <laughs> Or, whether you wake up like I do, everywhere. <laughs> because when you wake up, you still have your body recovering from sleeping and it's becoming aware and awake. So how you choose to make the direction of your day go is up to you because God said literally that the direction of a man's heart is his own but the footsteps are ordered of the lord so you can choose which way you will go today you can choose which way you go tomorrow now god may cause the circumstances of your life to force you in a certain direction or cause you to go in a certain direction because just like any other thing the path of least resistance often is what most people choose because it's a little easier to go that direction so god kind of sometimes has to hurt people that way I hope not so with you. Because you see, God loves you. And when you know that God loves you and that God is love, then you understand that he operates from a position of love, that he knows what's best. He always takes the time to invest in you in a way that you don't understand, but that you can trust in a simple way. My wife likes to bring up different things about her relationship with God and mine and I'll often sometimes sit down and say honey let's pray and she'll say you pray I'll say no I want you to pray because you see she feels sometimes like as though it were intimidating that if I pray that I sound so whatever and I told her I said look God hears every idle word you speak now, I treat my time of my idle words, my words spoken to other people, my words that I know that God hears every day as being the reality of God with me. She thinks of prayer sometimes as being, you take the moment and you close your eyes or you focus in and you zero in and then you, you make some spiritual sounding prayer and it sounds so neat and wonderful like davening as a Jew or or genuflecting, which means simply getting on your knees like a Catholic, or maybe standing and, you know, offering up the intonations like Greek Orthodox, or maybe some other religious format that you've been taught or trained. And all of those are good because God, the Holy Spirit, hears it and He kind of interprets it for God. So whatever it is, you know, is okay. But the interesting thing is God always hears you whether you're praying or whether you're in conversation he knows what you have said today because jesus made it very clear we ought to arrange and be careful with our words because they have the power to bless they have the power to hurt they have the power to heal they have the power to encourage not because there's power in the word itself but because of the way the feeling is that accompanies it that often causes people to choose the wrong way or the right way. So when God's word is working, he points us back to himself so that we would cause our conversation to always be mindful that God is listening and that we can talk to him throughout the day. And that's kind of what people have learned to call this attitude of prayer. It's not really an attitude, it's just simply knowing that God hears everything and so, as you're going through your day, you can talk to him in a simple way. You don't have to make it super spiritual. You can just talk to Jesus as though he were sitting here right now, even as he is with you and me, even as he lives inside both of us. So today, in my utmost, the sacrament of the saint. Oops, prayer in the Father's hearing. <laughs> Pick the wrong day. Father, I thank you that you have heard me, from John 11:41. When the Son of God prays, he has only one consciousness, and that consciousness is of his Father. He is only paying attention to him. 
God always hears the prayers of his Son, and if the Son of God is formed in me, the Father will always hear my prayers. I have to see that the Son of God is made real in my mortal flesh, that he is living in me, and I in him. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, and that means that the Bethlehem of the Son of God, it is where God is born in you. Is the Son of God getting his chance in me? Am I hearkening to his voice inside me, or my own thoughts of my own mind? Is the direct simplicity of the life of the Son of God being worked out exactly as it worked out in his historic life? Am I looking to the Father the same way that Jesus looked to the Father and depended upon him to do what he wanted Jesus to do? When I come into contact with the occurrences of life as an ordinary human being, is the prayer of God's eternal Son to his Father being prayed in me? When Jesus prayed, he said this, in that day you shall ask in my name. Well, what day? The day when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit himself, has come to me and made me effectually one with my Lord. Even as Jesus prayed, Father, I would not that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them in the world, and that they may be one as you and I are one. And so God sent the Holy Spirit to us, that he would live in us, to cause us to know him in a more real and intimate and personal way, which is why we say we are born again of the Spirit of God. We are born of the Spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It's pretty simple. That's why God sent the Holy Spirit to us, to live in us. Is the Lord Jesus being abundantly satisfied in your life, or have you got a spiritual strut on? Are you Mr. Holy? Never let common sense obtrude and push the Son of God out to one side. Don't let people say you're so heavenly minded you're no earthly good, because in reality you must be heavenly minded to be any earthly good. Common sense is a gift which God gave to human nature, but common sense is not the gift of his Son. God gave us God sense. Supernatural sense is the gift of his Son. Never enthrone common sense and make it as though it were higher, greater, or more important than the Word of God in you, than God speaking through you and God using you for His purposes. The Son detects the Father. Common sense never yet detected the Father and never will. What is common to man is not common to godliness and is not common but is such of the nature of the flesh. It looks to what it can see what it can touch, what it can feel, and what it can hear, but it can never sense the things of the Spirit. Our ordinary wits never worship God unless they are transfigured by the indwelling Son of God. Then our common sense is ruled by God's spiritual sense. We have to see that this mortal flesh is kept in perfect subjection to Him, and that He works through it moment by moment day by day, step by step, breath by breath. Are we living in such human dependency upon Jesus Christ that his life is being manifested moment by moment? Utmost is always the most challenging of devotionals because it asks of you, it speaks of, and always reinforces what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, that literally these things can be true. Now, if they are being worked out in you, then they are true today as you are growing from grace to grace. Doesn't mean you arrive there or that you are made super spiritual or super perfect or that you're somehow Jesus embodiment, but Jesus places himself in you to be his word to someone else as he wants you to be just the way you are today as he is changing you from glory to glory into the incorruptible image of his own son. So God is at work in you already to do and to accomplish his own purpose. So sometimes people mistake holiness, completeness, and perfection for what God can do in an imperfect vessel as you are. Because today in your imperfection, as you seek to be led by his perfection, you become complete 
in doing his will. And when you're doing his will, <laughs> that is perfection. So it's a kind of fun thing to look at. It makes it easier to be a Christian. It makes it easier to walk with God because you realize that sometimes just the way you are with your faults is the way God can use you because when you think you have no faults, the blunt truth is God can't use you.